Alright, welcome to yet another fabulous Sunday night news and nonsense with total destruction today and Spatry's cup of shiznits. Uh, say total West today. Um, we were talking about playing uh, Russian roulette last night, you know, with a 44 Magnum yes. and uh, five chambers loaded. Yes. Um, I think <laughs> how many how many participants need to be uh, sitting at the table for that? Uh, probably zero, because we will probably scare them all the way. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'd say so. <laughs> yes, uh, gee, thanks for that. But the, just to let you folks know, by the way, this is a news and nonsense on the live Total OS Today show podcast on the wonderful LDC, Linux Distro community. But yeah, we were talking a wee bit about... Uh, changing my channel to the Total Destruction Today channel because Spatch was, was going off on a, on a tangent about weaponry, right? Yeah, <laughs> and I think I was taking a shot of NyQuil, and when you said that Total Destruction Today, the NyQuil came up <laughs> out my nose. <laughs> exactly, and uh, I just realized if we were literally to go fishing with dynamite this weekend, Next weekend, we would be fishing for shipwrecks. <laughs> yeah, I'd have to say so. Guess what, folks? Steam for Linux beta testing is starting in October. The external beta will be only available to 1,000 users who will be provided with a sign-up page that will be announced in a future post. And I'm also assuming it'll probably have a non-disclosure agreement and all that other stuff. I've done a few beta tests myself. I uh, tested the Skyfire browser, um, and uh, I also did uh, some beta testing for the Darkest Dawn game. So beta testing is a lot of fun. Uh, so if you got an opportunity to get in on that beta test, um, good luck to you. Hunt down all those bugs and make it wonderful for the Linux community. We're, we're all really excited about that one. What say you, Total OS, today? Well, as you realize, I, I generally don't uh, play any PC games on either Windows or Linux. I know you mentioned the Humble Indie Bundle, and I may give it a shot. But for me, you know, my Xbox 360 handles all my fun needs. But, uh, well, since we're on the subject of open source, Patrick, do you, do you, you still use Blender, yes? Absolutely. Love it, love it, love it. Well, apparently the Blender uh, Foundation has released its fourth movie which I didn't know till like literally 20 minutes ago, called... There you go, yes. <laughs> What's that, it called? It's called Tears of Steel. Apparently it's a science fiction film, and briefly they're describing it as a normal movie with impressive effects or something like that. It's on YouTube, um, so check it out, called Tears of Steel. I don't know what it's about. Uh, I will have to check it out myself, but it's made by Blender, the open source. Um, how would you describe Blender? Like uh, o open source, multimedia, everything application? Uh, it is. It is a multimedia enthusiast stream can true because not only does it do um, uh, 3D modeling, you can also do animation, and it's also a non-linear uh, editor as well. Now, uh, if you visit the uh, Cup of Linux channel on YouTube, uh, you'll see where I pretty much did a nice review on Blender, and I, I pretty much give you an overview of some of the things it does. Plus, I also have a few tutorials where I was sitting down playing with it, um, and that sort of thing. And interestingly enough, the intro that's on my show was done, uh, I think it from the time I installed um, Blender all the way, it, I think it took like close to 80 hours or something. Wow. Like that. Yeah, well, from the time I installed it to modeling and everything, but the thing is I've had some modeling experience in the past and that sort of thing, and the new interface that Blender has um, is really, really um, intuitive. It's not that hard to use, and there are Buku tutorials all over YouTube that teach you how to use it. So um, if you're, you know, if, you know, if you like to draw and you have a, you know, you have a little, um, a little bit of uh, talent in your uh, in your fingers, right? Yeah, definitely, it's worth your time to try it out. All cool. right, we've got a guest on the show. We've got Math Cubes, and Math Cubes has a news article for us. Uh, go ahead and share with what what the community what you got for us. Num V point six was released on September twenty six, and new features are in it. Uh, improved number 
improve to notification into a redesigned message tree, smarter notification and other trees and refinements. Activity overview with an improved layer in that application menu and activity overview was moved to the launcher on the left side. The source box has been moved to the center on the top with a rewrite interface uh, of a new feature in it, a new lock screens that provide the odds functions like media control and notifications, must improve system settings and design user menu, especially accessibility tasks to needed with a screen reader that can be enabled with the parts of a button, a lot of bug fixes, and other things. Awesome. Now, in related news, I want to mention that um, Ubuntu has now released its GNOME Remix. So if you want to have a look at that, that's another good way to uh, check that out. What have you got, Total West, today? Well, let's see. Um, a little bit of Apple uh, news. Uh, apparently, um, Apple, the current CEO, um, Tim... Cook, I think, is that okay? Enough already. The sound effects, jeez. <laughs> Apple makes a fine product, folks. Okay, but but they emitted a big boo boo. So go ahead, do do the boo boo sign again. Boo, <laughs> oh, boo. <laughs> yeah, really. Oh, all right. Well, uh, apparently the Apple mapping app uh, is not, shall I say, up to quality standards. And the CEO actually admitted it and recommended to go back to what you were using before, such as Google Maps. So in a very rare, um, residue of perfect honesty, they admitted they, you know, screwed up. So if you have the new, uh, Apple iPhone with iOS, uh, iOS, uh, iOS number six, stay away from their Apple Maps until it's, you know, redone and go back to what you were using before. But uh, they admitted it. I, I give them credit for it. I, you know, I, I use Android and I seldom use uh, Maps. I, I'll use my GPS sometimes, you know. But um, as far as that goes, if you are currently using Apple Maps, well, you Maps, you probably know by now that it's probably not up to par. Yeah. Now, um, speaking of Apple, you'll remember we were talking in the past about the battle between Samsung and Apple and that sort of thing. Yes. Guess what? Yeah. Next year, Samsung is expecting to release uh, devices that have a, a flexible screen that can bend. Ah, okay. Yeah. And uh, so uh, I guess I guess that uh, m that billion dollar bite in the wallet. Um, really isn't hampering their <laughs> no, uh, innovations. No. I'm sure they've got patents and everything and stuff on that. I, I thought I'd right. bring that up since you had mentioned that. I, w I read the article briefly, but I wasn't even right. going to cover it in tonight's news. But uh, some of you uh, may uh, know that I support goodoldgames.com because, uh, you know, I've mentioned them on my show all the time. Well, get um, there, there was an article I was reading just the other day. Uh, Will good old games add Linux support? Now, uh, this uh, CD project, the owner of GOG.com and creator of the Witcher series, will be announcing support for a new mystery operating system in a live stream event on October the 18th. This is a good chance that the operating system can be Mac, as CG product, uh, CD project is bringing the Witcher 2 to Mac OS X. However, Linux is not ruled out and probably 6,000 votes by Linux users may have convinced them to add Linux support. Now as many of you know if you have play on Linux uh, installed on your computers and you have a newer version of it running uh, many of the good old games uh, you, you can actually log into your GOG.com account download them those applications and install them in Linux um, and they've got a whole slew of them and I haven't even looked at um, uh, play on Linux recently to see if they've even added more games. So that is a wonderful option for you guys out there. And not only that, but GOG.com has a lot of really good games, classic games at great prices between uh, five and ten bucks. They got a few pr games that are priced a little bit higher than that. But if you want good quality, timeless games, you definitely want to head over there. So yeah, okay. Cool. 
Yeah, just as a, uh, I know we were talking a wee bit about Ubuntu, just as a reminder, the Ubuntu 12.10 uh, Beta 2 of Quantil, yes. Quetzal was released a few days ago. I, I still get a kick of that Quantil, Quetzal. I think of Quantum Pretzel, but yeah. It, <laughs> it was released September uh, 28th, actually, so yeah. Yeah, and I don't think I'm even going to have time to look at that because I still have a long way to go on my Ubuntu LTS boot camp. So. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. and, um, and uh, I still even haven't had a chance to uh, edit, uh, edit our uh, podcast from last night and put all that right. together. But you know I've been feeling a little bit under the I know, I know. That's what. That sort of thing, so. Yes, yes. I want. That's why I'll, I'll. We will keep tonight's podcast a little bit on the short uh, side, shorter side. I'm sure our wonderful audience understands. But um, let's see. What else do I have? Well, how about how about a little bit of nonsense news? Um, Spatry, are you? Yep. He loves his new Android <laughs> app. Hey, are you next to a 7-Eleven? Um, yeah, I'm very close to one, just a few blocks away. Why? Okay, well, this I actually caught on the morning news, and you may know, well, you know, but, but the audience may not know that almost half of what I get for the nonsense news I get in the morning news report on, on the radio. But 7-Eleven apparently has been able to predict the last three presidential election cycles here in the United States. And do you want to know how? How do they do that? Well, apparently they've asked uh, voters or, you know, customers coming in the store who buy coffee, if you, go, if you are going to vote Democratic, uh, pick your coffee or take your coffee with you, but pick it, the, use the blue cup. If you are going to vote Republican, use the red, red cup. If you are an independent and not going to vote, uh, use, well, actually, I'm not sure what you would use. I guess you're going to buy a Twinkie or something, but <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember. Probably a white cup to be, to, to be neutral. But, yeah, uh, there, there is an actual website. It's 7election.com. And apparently, uh, even though uh, 7-Eleven's official statement, this is uh, not a scientific survey, but they have been correct the last three election cycles. And apparently, uh, if this proves to be correct, Obama is going to win by a landslide. But I found that somewhat unusual because I've never heard of that. Yeah, that is, that is kind of uh, odd. Um, <laughs> but um yeah i guess it would make sense you know um but the thing is you know what if what if you're one of these people um like me you know in the morning time you know uh and i have to get somewhere real quick i need my coffee to get my energy who's gonna bother to even read the damn sign and pick a you know okay i'll pick a blue cup because i'm you know feeling blue today or you know, I'll pick the red cup because maybe it's the right shade of right. red. Or, you know, who's, right, who, right. who actually reads all these signs anyway? Somebody just grabs a cup of coffee cup, fills up the coffee, and runs the red. Right, to pay right. For it. You know, uh, I don't know how accurate that is, but hey, I mean, if they're, if uh, you know, if uh, they're, you know, I don't know about that one. Well, that's uh, why their their official statement was is this is not scientific although apparently they have been right the last couple of times or so but hey we'll we'll see what happens the first debate i believe is wednesday night so we'll see if 7-eleven gets it right uh coming this november and the winner gets a year's supply of rice aroni the san francisco treat and the loser gets to go home with nothing okay we'll send them a twinkie <laughs> Wouldn't it be cool if the winner, whether it's you know Obama or Romney, exactly? I think it would be cool that I think it'd be cool that if Obama or Romney won, uh, when they go to their platform to thank everybody, they're holding like a Seven Eleven cup in their hand or something, you know? But yeah, <laughs> yeah, something like that. Yeah, that that would be that would be funny. Um, but uh, not surprising to say the least. I mean, you see advertising in everything nowadays, right? You know, right. uh, yes. Um, wouldn't that be funny to you know see Pepsi on top of the White House or something like that? You know? <laughs> right. Yeah. I yeah. saw I saw a movie about that. It was a horrible B movie with Val Kilmer in it. 
And, I mean, they had the Pepsi logo on the moon and, you know, um, they even had they even had uh, advertising on livestock and uh, all kinds of weird stuff. Yeah, it was a dumb movie, though. I can't remember what it was, but um, yeah, it was one of those things I saw in Crackle or something like that. Yeah, yeah, I, I actually have the Crackle app on my Xbox 360, and I was actually watching a very poor movie last night. One of the Godzilla, you know, CGI guy in the monkey suit it was really bad but yes uh, i love <laughs> yeah, you, well you know what i mean yeah yes ladies and gentlemen visit crackle.com for all of those really terrible movies when you absolutely have nothing better to do with your time uh unless you find slamming your fingers yeah. in car doors it'll be a little bit more exciting Ew. oh my goodness <laughs> gracious well that's all i got yeah, that's all I got. Let's call it a night, hey? Sounds good to me. So, uh, once again, uh, thanks to all the listeners out there in the LDC. Uh, thank you, Spatchery. Thank you, Math Cubes, for contributing a news article. Greatly appreciated. Thank you, Math Cubes, yes. Yeah, and don't forget, uh, here on the LDC, everybody is welcome. It doesn't matter what you use. Linux, Windows, Apple, you know, Android... You are welcome here every Sunday night on my show, and of course, Saturday night on Spatry's Linux Zoo Crew. Uh, just uh, a little uh, notation, some of you have been asking about IG Infinitely Galactic. Uh, he sent me a PM a couple nights ago, so I hope to have him on sometime in the near future. And on that note, Spatry, that's all I have. Yeah, and uh, yeah, we're really excited about having Infinitely Galactic back with us. Um, I understand he's finishing up uh, on college, so he'll have a little bit of time to uh, get back into the podcast with us. Uh, yes. It'll be exciting to have him, and and hopefully we can uh, really uh, add a new dimension to these podcasts. Exactly, and I almost forgot one more thing. When, when oh, this, yeah. Yeah, when this gets out, uh, to, uh, to all of you who will, be, who will be listening to this on my channel and Spatry's channel, I want to do a show sometime in October before the rush of the holiday season called a, a uh, parents podcast. And basically, the idea is for uh, parents who have a child or children, say preteen years up to the age of 12, how has uh, technology and or social media affected you and or your children? And I would love to have uh, some parents on the show either speaking live or if you're shy, that's okay. Maybe in the, you know, in the IRC chat room. So I'm looking forward to anyone who would like to participate who is a parent. Now, I have no way of proving it that you're a parent or not, so I'll take your word for it. But uh, how has, yeah, right. So how has, the, the question will be how has technology such as social media, you know, Facebook and the Xbox 360, how has it affected your children how does that sound <laughs> that sounds like a winner to me armageddon is being a smart aleck tonight he said on irc that windows and mac os x users can join the linux distro community under their own discretion <laughs> everybody's uh, welcome here folks yes that is not my view or spatry's view when i say this is a <laughs> Yeah, when I say this is a family-friendly show, and by the way, Armageddon, on my next channel, Total Dis Destruction Today, uh, you will be on it, and, and, and if you have a boat, let's go fishing with dynamite, shall we? <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, Armageddon says he was just cracking a joke. That wasn't his view either. We believe you. Okay, sounds good to me. Uh, folks, thank you for listening. Thank you, Matt Cubes. Thank, thank you, you, thank you, thank you, yes. We will catch all of you sometime in... The future. Adios. Goodbye. Ciao.